In this video, we are going to go over the most tilting things in League of Legends, and yeah, there's a lot of them, so let's get into it. Let's be honest, one of the most tilting things in this game is getting your penta kill stolen. There is nothing worse than getting your quadra kill, knowing you're only one kill away, and then suddenly someone on your team savagely yoinks it away. It's honestly kind of amazing how many people have thrown games or straight up left because someone stole their penta kill. And honestly, it's kind of understandable. Penta kills don't really come around often, so getting robbed one straight up sucks. This guy knows what I'm talking about. Dendaki. Sometimes the greatest tilt begins before the game even starts, and that's in champ select. Getting your champion banned from the other team is annoying, but it's a part of the game. However, getting your hovered champion banned from your own team is next level tilting. Now there are three different scenarios with this. The first is that they somehow manage to accidentally ignore the entire warning screen where it says, are you sure you want to ban your teammate's champion? And if it truly was an accident, then it begs the question, do you really want someone like that on your team who can't even read? Now the second second scenario is the most likely one and that's they 100% did it on purpose but they're claiming it's an accident and they're only doing it for the sole reason that they had the same champion feed last game. It's always fun when they bring their previous issues from their last game into their next one. And the last one is that they did it on purpose, they admitted to doing it on purpose, and they just like to see the world burn. Either way, any of these situations are great ways to lose your game before they even start. Next up we got the Hashinshin teleport. Now if you don't know who Hashinshin is, that's fine, it's really the teleport that matters. And that's when you die and immediately teleport back to lane only to instantly die once again. Now this was much more entertaining before they added in the unleashed teleport but it still happens from time to time and if it happens to you it's a great way to motivate yourself to uninstall the game. I mean let's face it once you die twice in a row and lose your TP you're just kind of screwed for the rest of the game. One of the top contenders for the most tilting thing is getting held hostage in games. Now this usually happens because either your team really thinks they can still come back from a 40 kill deficit which is its own problem or someone on your team hates everyone and everything so they're doing their best to make you as miserable as possible, making you wait until 20 or until the game is over. Hashtag winnable. Getting your wave taxed as a laner sucks, especially when someone on your team breaks your freeze. But what's even worse than that is when someone on your team, usually the jungler, comes and attempts to fight your laner by themselves or at an absolutely terrible time. And of course, after they die and realize that they couldn't fight them, they look to find you on the map so they can drop a few question mark pings on your head, even though you were clearly nowhere near them and told them not to do it in the first place. But yeah, it's still your fault somehow. What's equally as tilting is when they force you into fighting by ganking when you're half HP with a huge minion wave. And you already know if you don't go in and help them, they're just gonna ain't your lane and then blame you, so you almost feel forced to try and help. Best case scenario, you die and they get the kill. Speaking of pings, everyone loves a good question mark ping dropped on them. It's just kind of a staple of League of Legends. And it also just happens to be one of the most annoying things in the game. Puppy, subscribe, thank you. Another tilting thing in League is when people ping you to do an objective that you're literally already taking. I don't know what urges people to do this, but you can be sitting in top lane smacking the crap out of a turret, and then someone on your team, probably after dying, will start pinging that same turret for the heck of it. Maybe it makes them feel like they're helping the team or something. Honestly, wouldn't surprise me. One thing that I absolutely hate is when people ping that they're on their way when they're definitely not on their way. Now, I of course will take some credit here and say that I should pay more attention to the minimap, but I see this so much where people will ping on their way, walk right by your lane, and then head straight for a camp instead. If you're gonna do that, why even ping in the first place. What usually happens to the laner during this time is they try and take a terrible trade so they can bait in the opponent, but instead of killing them, they just lose all their kill pressure instead. Feels bad, man. Don't you love it when you realize that your laner is missing, so you start spam pinging missing over and over and over again, only for your team to die to them 10 seconds later anyways. The best part is when you know they're coming to a specific lane and you start pinging the crap out of them, telling them to back up, knowing what's about to happen, but they just keep playing normally, and of course, they still die. It's also the cherry on top when they immediately start dropping question mark pings in your lane acting like you didn't give them any warning at all. That or they just type something like 3 bot. You think? Getting counterpicked in champ select isn't the worst thing in the world, but it's also not the funnest thing. It's just never a great feeling knowing that you're about to voluntarily hop into a game to get smacked around for the entire laning phase. As a jungler, it always sucks coming back to a camp only to find one chicken remaining. In fact, it's almost worse than just all of them being gone because one, the chicken now has survivor's guilt, and two, you really have no idea how long your camps have been sitting like that. Another thing that can be quite tilting as a jungler is when your teammate decides that they're more important than you and they start having a feeding frenzy on all of your camps. 
comps. There's truly nothing like getting counter jungled by your own team and then having that same team blame you for getting out jungled when they're the ones that have counter jungled you. F in the chat for all the junglers out there. One of the best feelings is hopping into a ranked game thinking everything is going to be normal only to realize that you have insanely high ping for absolutely no reason. Sometimes your internet just decides to randomly screw you over and you don't realize until it's too late. Almost every League of Legends player knows the pain of winning a ranked game only to see your LP sitting at 99 at the end of it. Being one LP short of promoting is the worst feeling ever, especially because all your games before that were probably getting 16 LP, but for a limited time only, Riot decided to give you 15. I swear they always know when you're in these type of situations. This is a pretty specific one, but you know those times when you're in champ select, go through the whole pick phase and then someone dodges, which is annoying in itself, but isn't the worst part. The worst part is hitting except after getting into a new champion select with almost the same people, but on different teams, and then seeing your champion banned immediately because someone on the other team from the last champion select is now on the other team. Like I said, very specific, but it's one of the reasons I hate hovering. But you already know that if you don't hover, your own team's gonna ban it for sure. Uh, yeah, so emo and Jaco. There's a certain type of player who always pings assistance no matter what. Somehow they're always in trouble or need a gank and it's extremely tilting to deal with, especially as a jungler. On the flip side, having your jungler invade when literally zero lanes have priority is so annoying. They're of course going to die, but they're also going to blame their laners for not rotating faster than the enemy team, even though you know they were completely shoved into their turret. Speaking of macro, don't you love it when an objective like Dragon is about to spawn and you instantly see your jungler running to the top lane to farm a wave? I know I do. Shaco again. Champion. There's some people out there that just think they're better than everyone else. So when they get autofilled, they refuse to play their assigned role. They're also willing to go as far as throwing a tantrum and throwing the entire game because they were too stubborn to try and win somewhere else. These are also probably the same types of players that love shoving straws up turtles' noses. From my experience, this is more of a blind pick thing, but it definitely still happens in draft and ranked. Piggybacking off of that, one of the most tilting things is when you step up to give an autofilled team member their role and the way they return the favor is by running it down. Additionally, they probably also start flaming you the the entire game. No good deed ever goes unpunished, especially in League. One of the most tilting things as a jungler is forgetting to buy items. There's nothing like taking your first camp only to realize that you didn't hit level 2 after killing it. It's definitely an I up moment. Not gonna lie, I've been holding off on this one a bit because it's so obvious, but I have to include it in here, and that is getting camped. Everyone can deal with getting ganked here and there because it's just a part of the game. But when someone constantly ganks you over and over and over again to the point you literally can't play the game anymore, that's when the tilt really sets in. Something else I haven't said yet, which is objectively one of the biggest things on this list are your teammates. Teammates who AFK, teammates who int, teammates who feed, teammates who only blame others, teammates who think they're right but are actually wrong and also kind of Dumb, and yeah, you get the point. It's almost ironic how half the battle of League of Legends is honestly fighting your team while simultaneously fighting the enemy. I have to say one of the worst teammates though is the one who instantly gives up after the first kill and types GG in chat. Like why even play League if you have such tiny brain? One really tilting thing as a jungler is if you're trying to kill a camp and it resets on you while you're kiting it. Always a classic. Just straight up smurfs. All shapes, all sizes, all types, anything smurf. Next up, we got getting KS'd, or even worse, getting called out for KSing even though you really did do the most damage. Don't you love starting off your games by having one person on your team invade by themselves and giving up first blood? I feel like this is almost every other game. I don't know what it is with some junglers, but one of the most tilting things they do and one of the things that they love to do is YOLO dive into their team for a chance at maybe stealing Dragon. Now, don't get me wrong here. Sometimes you really do have to just Hail Mary it for a chance at winning, but other times it's perfectly fine to just give up their first tiny little drake. I've seen so many games where we'd be ahead and the jungler would just yeet himself into the pit trying to steal and then after they failed miserably, the other team would just bear him for free because, well, our jungler is dead now. Something else that's kind of tilting is when you ping your on your way to catch a wave and then suddenly everyone else on your team also wants that same exact wave too. Missing CS, specifically the cannon minion, will always be an extremely easy way to tilt. There's nothing like going through the entire laning phase and not being able to last hit to save your life. Now, as we talk talked about, there are times where your team refuses to forfeit, but there are also rare times where your team forfeits a completely winnable game. Sure, in most cases, if you get outvoted 4-5, to five, you're probably in the wrong, but there are some games where the game is 100% winnable, but your team just throws in the towel. I'd say the most common example of this is when you're personally popping off, but everyone else on your team is doing garbage and they just don't want to play because they're not the ones doing well themselves. Speaking of which, that leads me into my next one, which is when people don't let themselves be carried. I have never 
understood this one, but for some reason, so many people absolutely refuse to be carried. They could be in a game where every single lane is winning but theirs, but they decide since they're not doing well, they'll just try and keep fighting anyways and make it as hard as possible for their team to win. A lot of the time, going as far as being the sole reason that their team loses. Personally, if someone wants to carry me, I'm 100% down. I am more than happy with just sitting in the fountain and getting that free LP. There's nothing like getting assigned ADC and then immediately seeing a Rengar or honestly any assassin being locked in on the other team immediately. You just know for the next 30 minutes, you're going to be non-consensually getting well, you know, if you're a support player, I'm sure you've all had a few moments where you've tried to give someone a kill on your team, but instead of them getting the kill, the other team turns it around and ends up killing both of you. The worst part about it is knowing that you could have killed them had you not stopped attacking, but you were just trying to be a team player. There's nothing like getting a champ select in a rank game only to see a potato queue up with some ridiculous off meta pick. Like, I'm sure it has a purpose, but do we really need to test it in my ranked game? Don't you love it when you carry the crap out of someone literally being the only reason that they won the game? but they are still pissed at you because of the one mistake that you made early on in the game. And honestly, it probably wasn't even your fault. People can get so fixated on one specific moment that no matter what happens after that or how well you play, anything bad that happens for the rest of the game will somehow be your fault. Woohoo! One of the most tilting things is how complicated everything is. Even people who've been playing this game forever have those what the f moments and wonder how someone can do so much damage or how a champion can be so busted. Additionally, because it's so complicated, it's almost impossible to teach new players how to play. They really just need to learn from spending hours playing the game, which let's be honest, can't be the most healthy thing in the world. Something extremely frustrating is losing to someone in lane that you know you're better than, but the only reason you're losing is because you're having an off game. It could also be any other small thing like ping, lag, or whatever. Typing GG at the end of the game is kind of an unwritten rule of league, but some people do it knowing damn well it wasn't a good game considering we just got slaughtered. One of the most tilting things as a top laner is trying to split push knowing your team is going to try in 4v5 anyways, even though you just need a few seconds to get pressure first. And once you draw two or even one of them over, your team should be fine. However, it's almost inevitable that someone on your team will get caught or try and initiate a 4v5 and then everyone on your team will blame you after they get slaughtered for not being grouped. Something super annoying is when you ask the other team to report someone on your team who is either trolling or AFK and they respond with some smug remark like why or we were gonna win anyways. Like this game for example where our Kha'Zix decided to take everyone's farm in every single lane and sure he got some golden kills but now every single lane was 100% behind. And when our mid asked to report him, this was the other team's response. It honestly never made sense to me because we're just trying to prevent the troll from showing up in anyone else's game, but I guess they'll figure it out when it's their problem and not ours. Similarly, there's nothing worse than getting into it with someone else on the other team and chat and then losing to them. Feels great when you win, but when you start talking a lot and then end up losing, it's a pretty tilting feeling. It's probably just karma for talking in the first place. I will say though, one really tilting and annoying thing is when the enemy tries to start something for no reason. Like maybe you just got a kill in your lane and just for that they type something like your garbage or trash or whatever nothing like getting flamed for just playing the game normally one thing that's insanely frustrating is when you smash your lane but all the other lanes lose it's a pretty sucky feeling knowing that you pretty much did everything you could and the person on the other side that you just crushed basically just got a free win and lastly for the first time ever i'm gonna mention shaco shaco is the most tilting thing thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time thank you so much to my tier 3 patrons stefan noctak and james and thank you so much to my other patrons as well i seriously can't thank you guys enough all right bye